Hello, everybody. Uh, we're here to talk, talk to you about uh, using Kotlin multi-platform in one of the largest food and drink applications in the world. I'm Cass. I am a cross-platform developer, and I'm currently heading a team of very talented uh, Kotlin multi-platform devs. Hello, uh, I'm Jackson. I'm an uh, Android developer in this project. Yeah, so uh, we work for a Stockholm-based software consultancy called Humane. Uh, it's possible that you haven't heard about us, but you'll definitely have heard about one of our clients, which is McDonald's, and more specifically, one of the projects that we do with them, which is the McDonald's app. A um, couple quick stats about it. So we started development. The app has been around a little bit over 300 million times. We currently support 63 countries, more coming in every, day, every month. And directly through the app, we get an order, more than an order every second. So before we start to talk about the uh, KMM stuff, uh, a bit of sketch of the uh, history uh, before. So uh, McDonald's is a huge global uh, franchise company. And uh, to take control of each of these 63, 65 uh, markets, each market has individual control of each uh, feature payments, payment providers, um, loyalties, and a lot of details. And so uh, in the beginning, in 2015, uh, this application was the first attempt to take control of all of this, uh, taking control of each detail for both platforms. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure a lot of development happens since 2015, and we are going to skip over all of that. Uh, in 2020, we start working on a new feature, which is mobile order payments, which is probably what you think about when you hear McDonald's app. It's the ability to order your food, watch the menu, pay directly in the app. Um, you can imagine this is a very complex feature, and not only because in 63 markets, that's 63 different ways of ordering, 60, 60, uh, you know, a bunch of different payment providers, payment solutions, and then as well, on top of that, you know, do it once for Android, do it once for iOS. That was such an incredible amount of work that that was really the first time that we started considering a cross-platform solution for McDonald's. Uh, we did choose for KMM at the time as well, even though that was before the alpha even was out. Um, it was, we, this was very much our, our, you know, our test for a Kotlin multi-platform, just because we could use our existing you know, structure, our existing knowledge in the company, our Android team, our iOS team, while at the same time using the Kotlin knowledge that we had from the back end, which we also use Kotlin for, and from the Android side, of course, to you know, make the cross-platform solution. You know, we work compatibly with, with a lot of legacy code, because, you know, eight years development, you get a lot of legacy code. Uh, and we're not starting from scratch, because we could, you know, get a little bit of the stuff already done on Android and migrate it to multi-platform. So, uh, skipping ahead a bit, uh, for uh, past year, we have an opportunity to, to redesign the entire app. And so, we decide to refactor the app using modern UI frameworks, Compose and SwiftUI. And as we are pretty happy with the results of Kotlin multi-platform, we decide to scale for the whole app. And so, okay, this decision wasn't take over the night and we spent two months studying and testing and creating tools uh, to make this possible. Yeah. Because if we're going to do cross-platform development, we're going to take it very, very, very seriously. So, you know, even last year, still beta, uh, we spent a lot of time before actual development could start just making custom tooling, stuff for testing, state management, communication with the clients. Because our whole concept is going to be, if we're going to do cross-platform, then we're going to do as much as physically, physically possible in the cross-platform environment. As in, our, our, our mantra is a little bit like, we want to have zero to no conditional logic in the mobile apps at all. Even to the point where we would enforce implementing something in a shared code base that would, might be simpler to do separately in Android and iOS. Um, because we are actually taking control of everything, state handling and down, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, we use a feature-based approach, uh, mostly because we need the flexibility, because markets can customize their app as they want. Uh, so our architecture also absolutely needs to reflect that on the cross-platform level, uh, which we'll go into a little bit now. OK, uh, taking a look on the architecture, as mentioned before, uh, we are using native 
uh, solutions for the UI. And so we have static screens and components, and that's it. And uh, in the presentation logic, we use 90% uh, of the shared code because in iOS, we have um, some workarounds and some uh, takes that Cass uh, will mention before, but the, the other part, the view model, the business logic is completely shareable. And in the data layer, we share not just the network uh, requests, uh, access to the assets and other particular uh, stuff from the apps directly from KMM. Yeah, um, this is an extremely, extremely simplified uh, example of what part of our app looks like. Um, as I mentioned, we have a completely feature-separated approach. Um, at the top level here is our modules. That's the only part of the KMM framework that uh, our client apps uh, interact with directly. And they are completely horizontally separated, so uh, individual features do not communicate with each other directly. Um, so for example, one of the features we have is the market picker. Um, this is just a, a module which includes stuff like the view model and the, the communication side. This follows the life cycle, is linked to the life cycle of a screen or a flow of screens, uh, and can only hold local state for that. A market, like a module, we use one or multiple repositories, which is you know the stuff that you probably all know, the main layer logic, follows the life cycle of the app, so it holds a little bit longer state, it gathers, transforms all the data, all that stuff. And then we have our libraries, which is just a bunch of custom tools or wrappers uh, around existing tools that we made you know, to make the whole uh, process easier. I want to zoom in a little bit on, on the market picker and show some, some code. Uh, and mostly, I want to get into how uh, the interaction works uh, with our clients, uh, client apps. Uh, we have developed a custom state management solution called uh, Revolver, uh, which we use for all communication between KMM and the clients. This is the market picker. Uh, it's one of the first features we redid uh, using multi-platform, and also one of the first things you see when you open the app. It allows you to select the country that you're in, which you use for McDonald's, uh, and select the language. It can also you know, autofill based on geolocation, all the kind of stuff, but we're going to skip over that. Um, so what our, what our state management uh, library does is we have a single, um, completely immutable state flow and communication between clients, as in um, the client applications will emit events that are write only to them and read only for KMM for us. Uh, and what we then do, uh, based on any uh, event, which is just a sealed class with a bunch of subtypes that comes in, we register uh, an event handler, which is basically a method that takes the incoming data from the event uh, and can asynchronously, based on that, uh, emit new states to the clients. So for an example here, uh, we have an on refresh event, you know, pull to refresh. Uh, but what that happens, as soon as the event comes in, this uh, event handler here is called, we emit a loading state, we fetch data from a repository, we emit a new state with new data. Um, we go one step beyond that. Um, we, from the KMM side, we don't want to expose any uh, errors directly to the client applications. So our view model will capture any and all errors that are thrown inside KMM. And then just like we have event handlers, we can register error handlers uh, to ca you know, which behave the exact same way. We get an error coming in, and we can handle it and emit a new state based on that. And what that results in, in the end, is a completely immutable state machine where for every input, we know all the possible outputs. And that's very powerful for us, because that allows us to uh, test and, and, and verify the entire state flow directly in KMM without having to you know, uh, include the clients at all. Uh, so that's why we also you know, enforce 80% or more code coverage to you know, basically direct test all this uh, directly inside KMM. And that eliminates so many possible bugs that would otherwise go to the client applications. Um, so what does it look like from the client application side? Well, it makes, um, as a client developer, it makes my, my life a bit more easier because I just need, need to take care about just the UI. And so KMM provide, in this case, uh, for our composite screen, uh, just we just collect the, the state. And uh, on the launch, we just need to handle, oh, OK, which uh, event we receive, in, the, in this case, we start with a refresh that load the data, and I will, uh, we will render the, um, the country and the languages, the lists. And when the user select the, the language, the, the country and the language, 
just hit the continue and we meet another event, KMM process and rent, uh, return a fact in case some message or the new state that we need to render the next screen. And uh, it's pretty much the same for the next uh, platform. Yeah, you know, for iOS it should be the exact same. Um, at the moment, there's one little extra step we have to do. It's because um, the C interop converts uh, the flows that we use under the hood to disposables. So we made the, make a little view model wrapper inside iOS, which just takes the state coming in from KMM, uh, hooks it up to the lifecycle, and then images it as an observable object with a published variable. Uh, we are working on including uh, some code generation for this, which would auto-generate for this. And there were some other solutions coming up that might uh, you know, make this completely seamless. But, but besides the wrapper, uh, the interactions on iOS are the exact same thing. Uh, yeah. So um, as mentioned before, we are pretty happy with the results of KMM because we can share uh, the logic between the, the platforms. The developers can sit together and discuss the features. And so as Swift and Kotlin are pretty closer, but pretty the same. Uh, our developers, iOS developers can see it and discuss it and understand and can easily can start to uh, code in the KMM part. And so we share the, the knowledge and the business uh, together. And uh, yeah. Um, there is some stuff that, uh, of course, we, we struggle with, and that's common. Um, definitely the CN drop, uh, working through iOS is a little bit harder, of course, because the code code get a little bit obfuscated. Uh, and, and, and debugging KMM issues from the iOS side is a bit hard, because unlike iNerd, you can't just peek into the code. Um, the time we spent on creating custom libraries, because, you know, first-party library support was at the time, you know, still work in progress, still is. Um, that you know you need to account for that. It's still a starting framework, so not everything is going to be pre-made for you. Uh, there's also the free framework issue or the diamond dependency framework. Um, if you have issue, if you haven't heard about that, it's basically the concept on iOS. If you have two uh, dependencies which want to access one shared dependency, um, what actually happens in iOS is that each dependency uh, is going to get a clone of that. Uh, in this case, repository. Uh, bundled with them, and those are not identical, and they will be from the iOS side. They will be completely different classes, which is quite a big issue because you know we can't you know, hold any state in there. We can't really do much communication between them. So what we have to do right now is we have to uh, bundle everything we have for iOS together. That kind of breaks our modular approach, uh, our feature-based approach, a little bit. Uh, you know, first of all, it adds, you know, it increases build times quite a bit. Uh, but most important for us, like if we have one breaking change on one side of the app, the entire app is now broken, uh, and that doesn't work well yet uh, with how we do our, our feature-based, uh, you know, development. Um, and we don't have a solution for this yet. So if you know something, uh, talk to me after the <laughs> thing. So yeah. Um, well, um, as KMM uh, continues to improving. Uh, we continue to improve each day and so uh, faster all these issues that we uh, struggle will we'll be solved, but we are happy and uh, we are trying to expand for other projects using the KMM solution. And as I said, uh, we can use the share the knowledge and not more have some silhouette uh, teams and just a unified mobile team yeah yeah so that's that's probably the biggest thing for us like it's not just oh cool nerdy framework that works well for us it's our entire team structure has changed to work around this we are no longer have a separate end or an ios team we work together close to together our clients uh, developers for nrs starting to have knowledge about the shared code base uh, we all know what's going on we have the same stuff between uh, android and ios no more platform dependent bugs, this kind of stuff is amazing. So we're already looking to expand this to other projects uh, within Humane or for uh, McDonald's specifically, and maybe even expand this to other platforms if, uh, you know, the web with Kotlin Platform, who knows. We know that not everybody has uh, two, three months to just play around with a new framework on their job, uh, and, and JetBrains and the community has been helping out a lot about the past year. Uh, so we're gonna give back a little bit, and uh, Revolver, our state management library, uh, is being open source as we speak, which you can find here or on our GitHub. Uh, yeah, 
if you want to know more, it's interesting to you, reach out. Uh, we love to talk about our stuff or reach out to one of the very talented people at UMaine. Uh, yeah, don't forget to vote. Thank you.